Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, well, decided to take a closer look. I have uh, my uh, my little uh, uh, logic analyzer uh, connected up, and I've used all 16 channels. Uh, the first eight are the data lines, D0 through D7. And then we have uh, RS012, those are the uh, register address lines on the part that's basically the port map. So there's uh, E0, E1, E2, E3, E4, and see, it goes zero through four. There's five, five registers. Um, then there's the CS0 that's used as a clock for latching the data. There's a reset pin. There's another chip select that's just high or low. There's a read, not write, so high to read, low to write. And then there's the handshake back from the part, which is like, I'm not ready, I'm too full. Okay, so this is the startup sequence. Uh, interesting, the, the AR, AR is popping up and down, didn't, didn't understand that, but we can take a look at the reset line. Uh, the reset line is being held low, so the part's being put into reset. And uh, when it comes high here, that means the part's out of reset and it, it's ready to go. And then sometime later, we're going to send a command or a string of commands. So these are the commands. And uh, these are the commands that um, I was using in my fourth uh, program. Uh, so it writes to various registers and puts values in there. Um, and so these are all um the setup sequence that that i used to use um you can see that the uh registers are um here so we have a low high high or uh, we should actually yeah um a low high high uh, let's see where's the um you can see the uh startup yeah, here's the startup sequence. Um, in fourth, it was FFP3. Uh, so uh, port three, which is uh, zero, one, two, three, we're gonna put in an FF. So if we look here, we have a um, one, one, zero, so that's three. So port three, and then all the data lines are high. So that's our FF. And then we're going to put in a C0 into P0. So R, S, 0, 1, 2, 3 should be all be low. And um, we have a low, low, low. And then it should be a C0. So it's high, high, low, 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 low. So, um, so this is the sequence that I'm sending. Um, FF into P3, C0 into P0, 50 into P1. A8 into P2, 5C into P3, E9 into P4. And these are all uh, frequencies and filters and all kinds of stuff in the part. But I knew that worked before, so I'm just going to duplicate it there. So my program is going to um, output some, some data. Let's see here. Where is it? At, at the end is hello. So it's just going to execute a hello, which is writing to register zero. Uh, uh, ha, eh, la, la, oh, oh, hello. So that's what it should output. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six bytes. And our loop, our loop is here. It's going to say hello. And then it's going to wait a second and say hello, wait a second, say hello. So that's, that's what it's going to do. So let's do a, another capture of uh, the logic analyzer. So it should be on that uh, saying hello every second. Uh, let, me, let me reset the part. Uh, oh, I didn't. Hello. It stopped. I don't know why it stopped. Uh, why isn't it continuing? It was. Hmm. 
Interesting. Maybe I need a longer, longer time. Does the initialization the sequence fine? And then it doesn't continue to talk. That's interesting. Um, why is that? Well, it was working. Um, let me see what's going on. Um, oh, we have a, a not ready, it's asserted at the very end here. The uh, not ready line went low, which means that my program is going to stop there. It's 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 watching this line, and if it's, um, if it's low, it's not going to send another command. Uh, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, let me uh, let me cheat it here. I'm going to um, I'm going to lift that pin. There we go. So these are the hellos. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six bytes, and these are all of the values for hello. So. Uh, so we know that everything is working, um, and um, we also know that the handshake is working, and for some reason it's not happy. So we need to dig into that. So logical an analyzer coming great for that. What I want to do now is I have every single thing being done exactly correctly because I'm controlling it in in uh, Arduino. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing uh, signals. I'm going to remove remove uh, read not write, and I'm going to remove uh, chip selects and things like that, and see which things need to be toggling and which things don't need to be don't need to be toggling. Because the way that I had it wired into the board, the the chip's always going to be selected, so I just let I just left it selected. So, but maybe it needs those lines going up and down. So that's what I'm going to investigate with this setup now. So, logic analyzer comes in handy. All right, major breakthrough. Uh, I was just sending the data too fast to the part. Um, I put in a hundred millisecond wait between phonemes, and I get this. So it says hello every second. Okay, so the chip works. That's good news. Okay, that's enough hellos. Uh, the chip seems to work. So all I need now is to figure out how to get it back inside the uh, MSI and get the MSI talking to it correctly. All right, so I've uh, discovered a little bit about the handshaking of this part. Um, it wasn't working uh, before. Um, there are several modes of handshaking, and um, I'll show you one of them here that seems to work great. Um, the handshake is uh, the last line here. It's A, not R. So it's uh, 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 what would appear to be not ready. Um, and it's actually the high state is when it's not ready. So it's kind of a misnomer. Um, you can see uh, in this uh, capture, I'm sending uh, a bunch of words. Uh, this this little burst here is hello, um, and and these others are some other things. Um, and um, let's just take a look at one of the hellos. Uh, when I send out the uh, data it's on the cs0 so this is every time a clock data is one of the, when one of these goes high um, you can see that the uh, ready line has been low for quite a while so the so pulling it low means that the device was ready for a command as soon as i issue a command that line goes high uh, almost immediately uh, it looks like it goes high on the falling edge of when i clock in the data so the part is, is then processing that phoneme. And uh, while the chip is 
talking that phoneme, speaking that phoneme, uh, it will stay high. And then uh, when it drops low, then it's ready to go again. So previously I had a 100 millisecond right, and I was ignoring this line. Um, but now what I'm doing is I have no delay at all, and um, I'm waiting for this line to drop before I issue the new command. So uh, it would, it would uh, say the H, and then the E, and then the L, and then the O. I think I have... Uh, Two L's and an, uh, uh, so you have two one L and then two O's to make it hello, make it a little longer on the end. So um, yeah, so every time that line drops, I issue a new command. The line drops, I issue a new command, and uh, yeah, that seems to be giving very uh, very good speech. Now I think that's the inverted logic in the uh, code that I have in the um, fourth program. So I'll have to I'll have to double check that, but. Uh, this does seem to indicate that the part is operating correctly with handshaking now, and um, I don't have to put in any delays or anything, and don't have to worry about how long things take. So, makes it a lot makes it a lot easier. The next step is going to be uh, if you take a look at this handshake I have here, uh, I I uh, I chip select, I tell it I'm going to write, and then I issue the uh, clock command, clock in the data. I don't know if these two are necessarily to toggle or not. If you read the data sheet, the data sheet says that the part must be in a state of 001. Um, if it's 001, then uh, the part is going to go look at the data line until it says until one of these three lines falls or changes state. So it doesn't matter if the chip select toggles or uh, the other chip select toggles or the read write toggles. It's going to be the first thing that toggles. So the first thing I have here that toggles is I have this falling edge, and that's when it triggers the part. So originally I had these two lines permanently grounded, and uh, that should have worked just fine, although it was a little bit confusing about how to generate uh, the chip select falling edge and keep the data valid at the same time. I was using basically the same signal for the tri-state buffer input and the uh, chip select on the part. Now I think what I might go do on the board when I when I go to use the S100 again is I might go ahead and enable the data lines all the time just uh, tie them enabled so that data is always going to the parts. The parts going to ignore it until it sees uh, a 001 in these three states. So I think that's the way to execute it more correctly. And um, so hopefully that will get data into the part and then maybe changing the uh, state of the uh, A0R uh, in the software will allow the part to handshake and help put some, uh, help put some sound. So I think next step is to um, go try the S100 again and maybe put a logic analyzer on the S100 um, card uh, to make sure it's operating correctly too. Okay, I have the uh, S100 card, the uh, speech card back in the MSI, and I've added a bunch of test points. So I'm able to hook up the logic analyzer to it. So we'll go through them. I hooked up the first three data bits, uh, 210, and then the next is the um, three bottom address lines, uh, 210. Uh, those allow you to access um, the different registers on the chip, 0 through 4. Uh, then some other lines, I don't know what they are yet. Uh, I have uh, this one is actually, I think, uh, CS0. Oops, CS0. And the clock. So. Uh, let's, we could take a look at the clock. Uh, clock is measuring at uh, 2 megahertz, so that's good. Um, I um, am outputting a 5, so 101, so that's the data bus. So this is where the 5 is showing up on the data bus. I'm sending that to register 1, which is zero, uh, zero, zero, 001. Uh, in address space. So that's working correctly. 
and then um, I need to have a clock. So let's zoom way in here. So this is where data is valid. And the data is valid and the addresses are valid. And the clock is running. And what we need is we need to have a falling edge before the data disappears. Um, now we could invert uh, this uh, signal here. And we can see that it is uh, happening before data dis disappears. So that should work. Um, using this uh, edge of this signal, I need to invert the signal, and that should be good enough for our CS0. And then we should have valid timing. Um, I um, verified that all the other lines can be held constant, so the reset line can be held constant. It doesn't need a hardware reset, it seems. Um, I've seen other people not use it. Uh, you can have the read-write always set to low, which means always write. And then the, there's two chip selects. Uh, you can always have the one chip select always uh, enabled as well. And what we need to do is to have a, a CS0 go high and then low. Um, and that should be good enough. Or I could use this line in the alternate uh, chip select um, and then tie chip select zero. Um, I think that would work as well. So um, it's kind of interesting. You can see uh, there's lots of other bits changing here. And that's because it's running a program. Uh, so the data lines, I mean, not the data lines, the data lines are quiet. These are actually uh, uh, gated uh, for just porting, for the port. Uh, port data, but these go directly to the S100 address lines. So the program counter and all those other things they are always toggling. So um, that's why you need these handshakes and clocks to enable just where you're interested in. And that's why it's called a bus. Everybody's on the bus and every once in a while somebody needs to get off the bus and uh, only one at a time. So, all right, so I think this is going to be pretty good because from that edge to that edge, I wish this thing had a way of measuring that. There might be. I don't know how to do it yet. Um, I recently upgraded my logic analyzer so I could use the new um, software. and I don't know how to measure uh, from one edge to another edge, but I'm sure there's a way to do that. We can kind of just read it off of here. Uh, these ticks are about uh, 0.1 microseconds. Let's see, we've got a 10, 10 megahertz sampling rate. We could do a 16 megahertz sampling rate. Let's go ahead and do that. That's as fast as the thing will go with this many data lines enabled. You know, if you only had a couple, it'll do 100 megahertz. All right, there we go. So what we're interested in is the difference between this edge and that edge. And, oh my goodness, they are coincident. That's not good. That's not good. 16 mega samples per second. I wonder why there's two of those duration. Let's do one second. Oh, there we go. How come it's different now? Difference between that edge and that edge. That looks like it's about 0.1 microseconds. Let's do it a couple of times. Maybe that's just the resolution that we have. Yeah, see, now they're coincident. So it might be a bit dicey, but we can give it a try. Um, if that doesn't work, we can look for another signal that's maybe a little earlier. Maybe a couple of prop, gate props uh, publications uh, a little earlier. So give that a try. Anyway, let's find an inverted version of that and go from there. So uh, I took a look at the schematic for my um, Centronics interface, and I do have a inverted signal um, for this uh, CS0. It's at the very, very bottom. Uh, it appears on one of the gates. 
uh, a 7400 NAND gate. So I should be able to use that one for my CS0. And hopefully when that falls, that data is just, just st still inside the chip and uh, it will be able to latch onto it before it disappears. So we'll give that a try, fingers crossed. Okay, uh, I found a uh, inverted signal. Um, so it is now this one. This one is actually CS0 now. And this is uh, mm, nothing. <laughs> so we're going to use this signal. Um, I also, this exact same signal is being used to enable the tri-state buffer to read data from the bus. And I just went ahead and um, hardwired that um, tri-state buffer just on all the time. Since we're chip selecting it, it doesn't matter if the data is rattling around. So you can see that the data is being held for a long period of time and the pulse happens right in the middle of the data, uh, which is great. So right now I'm sending the number five, which is a one zero one. And the data is st stuff elsewhere, but we don't care. And then uh, the uh, address lines are um, uh, zero, zero, zero. So these are zero, zero, zero. This is a one, zero, one. That's how it works. Um, and then we have the chip select pulse uh, happening right in the middle. So the timing looks great, but guess what? It still doesn't work. <laughs> so I've got to dig in a little farther. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it does need a reset pulse, um, but I'm not quite sure. Um, but we're getting very, very close. I, uh, it's encouraging that the timing diagram looks perfect now. Um, I got to make sure that the other chip selects uh, are hardwired in their correct states. Um, we're using uh, what's oh, still in the garage, uh, but we're uh, we need to have the uh, uh, right pin low, and we need to have the other chip select. I believe it's a. I believe it's positive. It needs to be tied positive, which might be what this one is here. Um, this line here might be the other one. Anyway, I'll sort that out, uh, but our time timing diagram is looking a whole lot better.